This is Gene Krebs on behalf of the Center for Community Solutions. We're high in Ohio. We're going around the state talking to people who know how things work. It's my great pleasure to be talking today to a good old and dear friend. That implies old, we're both yeah, old yeah, and yeah, decrepit. Good, yeah. No, but a pre-political friend, Dr. Gil Pacey, formerly of Miami University, now of the University of Dayton tech transfer area here. And so, Gil, what keeps you up at night besides the neighbor's barking dog? Usually my barking dog, but... Uh... I think the thing that keeps me up at night is, is our country's inability to truly innovate. We use the word innovation all the time, mm -hmm. uh, but it's, it's become a, a cliche. Um, we would kind of find innovation as an idea and use. If, if, in fact, we do not use somebody's idea, then we haven't innovated. Okay. Okay? Uh, and, and, and maybe the best example is our military. Uh, our military has a, a process of innovation that takes 20 to 30 years. And it's not because the technology is not ready. It's because of the process. Okay. Uh, I think we get a beautiful example how bureaucracy cannot develop major big systems. Obamacare's website is an example. Okay. The, 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 the bureaucracy couldn't do it. They couldn't manage it. They couldn't envision how to manage it. They couldn't do it, even though they wrote a big contract to have someone do it. It's the same thing in innovation. You have to know how to do innovation. You need to know how to find the part of innovation that's not, is the difficult part. And let's give you an example of there's a technology you're developing, and most people go ahead and do the parts they know they can do. Oh, yeah. I can do that, I can do But there's always a piece mm -hmm. that is going to make you or break you. That's the piece you have to get past. That's mm -hmm. where you should go work on that problem, do your hard work, your money there, and make it work. All right, let me throw this at you. Let's say that I've got President Obama, Governor Kasich, Congressman Turner, mm -hmm. Senator Sherrod Brown, and Rob Portman all sitting at a table, and I'm forcing them all to watch this show. Right. What would you say to those gentlemen assembled there right now about this issue? Because you've brought it up into yeah. a national context. Yeah. I think what you have to say is blow up the current innovation system inside the governments. You mean state? States and federal as well. It's just not serving us properly. No, it's not serving us properly. Uh, yeah, at the, at the, again, let's go back to the military. You create a requirement for an idea that you want. That requirement is created by some general that hasn't been in the field for a long time. If you go back and ask the soldiers who are just coming back from Afghanistan or someplace, what they, they go, need. I don't need that. Okay. okay, but yet it, here it is. It's in the process. In 20 or 30 years, it's going to come out. What you need are people in that process now that goes, no, no. Let's talk to the guys coming back. What did they need that we didn't provide them? How could we have secured them better? Okay. How could we avoid all the catastrophic injuries that we took? There are answers out there. Well, it's just like I'm reminded of in, in the um, uh, Iraq and Afghan war, our Humvees were completely inadequate, mm -hmm. and we were very slow to respond. Now, you talk yeah. to the military. Oh, no, we responded very quickly, but by business standards, by, hum mm -hmm. by humanity standards, they were quite slow at doing it. Absolutely. In fact, there's a, there's a gentleman that works in this uh, uh, building from time to time from a company called Bowhead. He happened oh, to yeah. be in... Uh, the Marines, he they're happened to be in logistics. They're, hap they're down Fairfield, I think. Yeah, right? somewhere in that area. Yeah. And, and what they said, what he said was, when it came back, was these things were getting blown up like crazy. We need better armor. He, he looked at the process of acquiring that and writing the requirements. They could get it in 10 years. Wow. It wasn't money. It was the process. So he simply went, looked for the hardened steel suppliers in the country, yeah. found a few, including somebody up in Cleveland, ordered it. Mm -hmm. Took it down to the range, said, look, it doesn't get shot through, it doesn't get blown through. Let's ship that over to the boys and girls, have yeah. them put them on their Humvees, Humvees and other things, and they'll be safer. Yeah. And that's what happened, at least in the Marine Corps. That's yeah. what happened. But that was totally out of the pocket, out of the rules. Yeah. And, you know, somebody came and slapped his hands for doing that, but he saved lives. You know, what this is, just this old saying that the generals always fight the last war. Yeah. And, in fact, what you're also saying is that we're also innovating for the last tech transfer, not for what the tech transfer or we're going to need tomorrow. maybe two generations of tech transfers. Okay. It would be worse than just one generation. All right. Well, 
that's sobering. <laughs> and on that sobering note, I'll let you go. And we'll be back tomorrow with another in our series here with Dr. Gil Pacey talking about tech transfer and innovation and entrepreneurship here in Ohio.